We've all become so used to life happening at breakneck speeds, so it can often feel odd when we allow ourselves to slow down. I recognize that in the making and sharing of these videos, there's a large part of me that demands that everything we share needs to be epic and adventurous. But I'm trying, in many parts of my life, these videos included, to embrace a slower pace, to consciously permit the calm and the quiet times to be as valued and memorable as the more exciting experiences. So this short video about our slow weekend in Annapolis is for all of you who are feeling the strain of a fast-paced life and want to take a moment to breathe. We are at another wine farm. I wasn't driving, so I just came along. If you saw our last video, you saw that we visited two other wineries, one in Maryland and one in Virginia. Very nice. We really enjoyed that. And now that we are exploring Annapolis for a weekend, we have discovered a little local winery literally five minutes down the road from where we are staying. Look at this vineyard behind me. Got the nicest grapes going. It's beautiful. And I have to say, we're only one wine into the flight, but this is the most unique presentation of a wine tasting I've ever seen. Little medicinal bottles, you know. Totally, absolutely love it. And also, when we just sat down at this table, I said to Jean that, you know, having come from Cape Town and having lived in Stellenbosch, we were really spoiled with options. And as soon as we sat down here, I said to Jean, this is already my favorite American mm -hmm. winery that we've been to so far. And I don't know what it is. I, I suppose it's these big barns, but it just shouts, this is an American vineyard, isn't it? The it's setting... Just, it's a look. Yeah, the setting is beautiful. They've really decked it out. Mm. We were here early enough to snag a table here, literally it's busy next and busy. to it's the like vines. Streaming in. People are streaming in, and um, they've got live music, and we're just, like settling in for the rest of the day. Yeah, we arrived on Thursday, late on Thursday evening. Quite a nice drive. I think we, we, we missed some of the traffic. Yeah, it took it us about an hour to get hour from to home to here. The first thing we did is let the um, happy cow tell us where to go eat something. Yes, and so the happy cow told us to go to a brewery, like in amongst the, the houses and the establishments on historic 4th Avenue, I believe. Cool, the food was very good. Yeah. We ordered something simple. Jean had a whopper of a sandwich. It was just so good. Very nice sandwich. And the beer was really good too. Afterwards, we had a little walk around this neighborhood of Eastport, which is described as the laid-back maritime district of Annapolis, where many of the streets in this quaint corner end with a view of the river, and for some, views of historic Old Town, which is home to the US Naval Academy. This area undoubtedly attracts the kinds of people who enjoy life on the water, from sailing, canoeing, kayaking, stand-up boarding, swimming, or fishing. As a result, there's an authentic nautical feel to the neighborhood. Is that the night that there was some band playing? Yes. It's a street party by one of the harbors. Yes. Which there are, there are many harbors in Annapolis. So. Yeah. During the summer months, it seems that the thing to do on a Friday night in this area is to socialize at the Maritime Museum with friends and family, letting your hair down, enjoying fresh food truck and stall snacks, and listening to the dad bands bolting out their classic summer tunes. And of course, it doesn't matter where you are, 
you're pretty much guaranteed a gorgeous view of the sunset. And then Friday morning. What did we do on Friday morning? First, we went for a little walk with this little madam. So if you don't know, we do a thing called Trusted House Sitters, which is where you get to look after cute little doggies and cats like this. Mm, very cute dog. Her name is Nova. Nova. Like Northern Virginia or Nova Scotia or Supernova. I don't know what she's named after. <laughs> I don't know. She does bark at other dogs. Uh, yeah. She wants to pick a fight. And as a result of that, we weren't able to go to this dog beach because little Nova decided that um, she was going to just be pick a fight. anti -search. Yeah. So instead, we enjoyed the waterfront and watched the storm clouds rolling. And sweated, sweated. And we did a lot of sweating. <laughs> it's so it hot and so, so humid. Hot. Where the dog beach is, is in a park called... What is it called? On the screen down here. Yes. <laughs> That's the name of the park we went to. And uh, it was really lovely. We had a, we found a beautiful little bench in a secluded little mm. picnic area and had our homemade lunch mm. and just um, kind of hid away from the heat and humidity and enjoyed the, the sea breeze. <laughs> it seems like a really nice park where people do a lot of supping and canoeing. Quite, quite big with all these big. pavilions that you can rent out for weddings. Yeah. And yeah, events. beautiful forest. Three, three. And it wasn't too expensive. It was only six dollars. Six dollars for the car. Yeah. For one. Yeah. For a car. Yeah. So really worthwhile visiting that if you're in the Annapolis area. And um, obviously, what the top thing to do when you're here is to go and walk through the historical town of Annapolis, which is so cute. Really? But if you do have a hankering for some greenery, then we highly recommend Quiet Waters Park, is what it was called. Okay. There you go. So while we were sitting enjoying our wine, listening to the music and generally just chilling, something rather unexpected Cheers. happened. Time for the next one. Mm. Oh my goodness. Yes. <gasps> what? I just years ago. That is insane. Sheila. Yes. <laughs> How are oh you? <laughs> I met Sheila years ago in Cape Town, so it was quite a surprise to be set right next to her at a wine farm in Annapolis. We caught up for a while and it was really lovely to share stories of how we'd landed up in this part of the USA. This chance encounter also made me take a moment to appreciate both how big and small the world is and how critical timing is in determining the unfolding adventure you happen to find yourself in. After our catch-up, we finished our wine tasting and headed back to the main Annapolis town centre. Along the way though, we did pop into another wine farm, but it wasn't nearly as nice as Great Frog, so we didn't stay. You can't win them all, I guess. This was our last night in Annapolis and I'd read about another summer specific event in the Old Town where they close off a portion of West Street and the restaurants set up tables in the middle of the road. It was a hot and muggy night and given the road closures we had to park quite a way away and walk through the residential streets towards the town center. Walking past these homes and businesses you can still get a sense of what this place must have been like back in the day. The architecture and the colours of the buildings make Annapolis a very walkable town and I'd really love to come back when it's a bit cooler. Dining under the stars on West Street sounds like a lovely evening out, especially if you're hungry and don't mind the heat. There was live music and a bit of dancing and a few occupied tables. Given that we'd already eaten and didn't expect any vegan options anyway, we hadn't planned to get a table, but we were hoping to soak up the atmosphere. Perhaps we were too early, or perhaps this was a quiet evening in general but it didn't really meet our expectations. 
It was still a lovely walk though around the town and there was certainly enough of a summer evening magic to end off our visit. Perhaps it was the humidity or perhaps we're just getting old or perhaps this is part of embracing more of a slower pace. We felt like having a quiet evening and an early night before bringing our chilled weekend in Annapolis to a close. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video where we head to Colonial Williamsburg.